everything would be in order in the planet of Xenosama. While both kings of the whole were taking a nap, the four guardians of Xenosama were fulfilling their functions over watching their security, but each one would feel a strange energy. Each one would be on guard in the four extremes watching over the security of the kings of the whole. Between them, they would observe waiting for something. Suddenly, a great ball of key would fall from the roof, destroying it. But the guardians would react in time. Each one would launch a ray of key contrasting the attack, while the kings of the whole continued resting. Suddenly, the head of one of the guardians would roll on the floor. The other three would be shocked, since they had not seen or felt anything. In a matter of seconds, the other three guardians would suffer the same destiny. Daishinkin would arrive in an instant upon sensing something strange. What is all this? Daishinkin would ask terrified. The kings of the hole would open their eyes and see the bodies of the guardians. Why are they sleeping? A Zeno-sama would ask. I think they died, the other Zeno-sama would say. How? The first Zeno-sama would say. Great lord, are you alright? Daishinkin would ask. We are, the Zeno-sama would say. What happened to them? The other Zeno-sama would ask. It seems that someone came in and killed them, Daishinkin would say. Daishinkin would look everywhere. He would find nothing. I think we will have to take some measures with all this, Daishinkin would say. Back on Earth, Goku just had dinner with his family. Wow, Goku, you've really grown quite a bit this year, Chi-Chi would say. You're right, Goku would say. I sure cultivated enough to take a year off. Don't get smart. You're not just working for money, you're working to set an example for Goten, Chi-Chi would say seriously. Come on, I didn't have that problem with Gohan, Goku would say. Gohan's a different case, Chi-Chi would say. Trunks studies and his father never worked, Goten would say. But Vegeta's a very bad example, Chi-Chi would say, offended. But here's the prince. Princes don't work, Goku would say. I don't care, Vegeta. You have a responsibility, and you must fulfill it no matter what, Chi-Chi would say. Suddenly, Whis and Beerus would arrive inside the house, as if nothing happened. How did they get in? Chi-Chi would ask, terrified. We regret this way of entering, but we had no choice, Whis would say. We're in a hurry. We need Mr. Goku to come with us. Let's go train, Goku would ask excitedly. Goku, you have work to do. No training. Chi-Chi would say seriously. But Chi-Chi, Goku would say a little sad. Don't worry, Mrs. Chi-Chi. We've got Mr. Goku a good job, Whis would say. Hey, you guys, why does everyone want me to work? Goku would ask, annoyed. It's a very important position, and it will be well paid, Whis would say. An important position, Chi-Chi would say, excited. Goku, I don't know what they saw in you to occupy that position, but you can't waste the opportunity. Accept it before they realize how you really are, Chi-Chi would say as if no one was listening to her. That was something, Beerus would say in shock. Uncomfortable to hear, Whis would say. Come on, Chi-Chi, don't exaggerate, Goku would say. Whis, tell me, what's this about? Do I have to fight someone? Goku would ask. Pretty much, you'll have to be the new guardian of Xenosama. The Guardian of Xenosama? Goku would ask. The Guardian of Xenosama! Beerus would say. Wow, the Guardian of Xenosama! Goku would say in amazement. Yeah, it's already clear that he's going to be Xenosama's guardian, Wiz would say. Please come with us. Gigi, did you hear that? Goku would say excitedly. I'll be the Guardian of Xenosama! Stop repeating yourself! Beerus would say annoyed. What do I have to do now? Goku would ask. First, you'll have to come with us, Whis would say. Whis and Beerus would take Goku to Xenosama's planet so he could start his new job. I only warn you one thing. Whatever you do, don't bother Xenosama. Remember who he is. What Mr. Beerus means is that if you make him angry, the Universe 7 could disappear, Whis would say. Don't worry, I get along very well with little Xeno, Goku would say. Don't you dare call him Little Zeno, Beerus would say angrily. You have to be thankful that Zeno-sama likes Mr. Goku, Whis would say. Finally, our friends would arrive at Zeno-sama's planet. Goku, you made it, 
they would both say at the same time. Hello, I'm here to be your guardian, Goku would say. We know, Zeno-sama would say. We asked for you, the other Zeno-sama would say. Great, now what do I do? Goku would ask. All the angels would arrive, including Daishinkin. Lord Goku, it's good that you came, Daishinkin would say. Hello, I see all the angels are here, Goku would say. Some of the angels would be somewhat annoyed with Goku, as they felt it was undignified for a mortal to be the direct guardian of Zeno-sama. I don't like this at all, Goku would think, thoughtfully. Well, there is not much to know. He will have to protect Zeno-sama since he doesn't have the other guardians, Daishinkin would say. What happens to them? Goku would ask. They killed them, Whis would say. But how? Goku would ask. They dropped their heads, both Zeno-sama would say as if nothing. What? Goku would say while holding his neck. Don't worry, nothing you can't control, Daishinkin would say. Anyway, you will be trained by me before you take your position. Wow, that's great, Goku would say. But what will happen now with Zeno-sama? We angels will stay here as long as you are training, Whis would say. Don't worry, we will use a time room after all, Daishinkin would say. That way, five years will pass in one day. The angels also have to fulfill their tasks. Mr. Beerus, why are you here? Goku would ask. I'm certainly afraid that you will do something rash, Beerus would say. The atmosphere felt more and more tense. The angels felt a natural dislike for Goku, except for Whis and Vados and a few more angels. Goku would be taken to a special time room, and he was ready to start his training. How strange! This place feels so light, Goku would say. Hey, shouldn't a time room have increased gravity? Oh, those are mortal training based on physical strength, Daishinkin would say. But my body is mortal, Goku would say. But you are climbing to the level of the gods, or didn't you notice? Daishinkin would ask. Let's do a test. Attack me with all your might. Really? But I can never do anything to you, if even the angels don't reach your feet, Goku would say. Attack me and you will understand, Daishinkin would say. All right, but I'll use all my strength. Otherwise, there's no point, Goku would say. Goku would use the Super Saiyan God Phase 2 and would throw everything towards Daishinkin. He would arrive with a strong fist blow, which the Supreme Priest would resist. But Goku would observe his fist. He would notice that the blow had been very weak. I think he noticed, Daishinkin would say. That was... Goku would say. Weak. That's because he's used to staying in normal and increased gravity, Daishinkin would explain. But he doesn't know what it's like to be almost without gravity. He should be prepared for it if one day he has to fight in space. Wow, it's like he can't punch well, Goku would say. Goku would start throwing several punches in the air. He would realize a surprise. Even at one point when throwing a kick, he would fall backwards. That's what I mean, Daishinkin would say. To be Zeno-sama's guardian, you must master many scenarios. Daishinkin would snap his fingers and the temperature would rise. Gosh, it's so hot, Goku would say as he began to sweat. This is also part of your training, Daishinkin would say. Being able to move in extreme temperatures, being a guardian, you can face certain deserts from all over the universe. You have to be ready for anything. Goku would be shaken and fall to his knees. Wow, that's a tough one. Goku would say, but it doesn't matter, it's worth it. Goku would be training all this time, learning to control his body in a more efficient way besides enduring the most extreme conditions. Meanwhile, on the planet of Zeno-sama, both kings of everything were playing with each other. The angels were attentive to them, fulfilling their needs. Whis, the air is tense, Beerus would say. I know, I could tell, Whis would say. To be honest, I have some suspicions. Mojito would arrive to talk to Whis. Brother, I see that your mortals give good results. They even become gods, Mojito would say. I hope that's not a sarcastic comment, Whis would say seriously. No, not at all. On the contrary, you have my approval, Mojito would say. Please, as if I needed it, Whis would say annoyed. What's going on here? Vados would ask. Nothing, Mojito being envious as usual. Whis would say. It's not a competition either, okay? 
he would say. What was missing? Wiz would say. Wow, I feel so small finding myself among so many angels, Beerus would think. Is everything in order? Bados would ask. I don't think everything can be in order with Goku as Xenosama's guardian, okay? Margarita would say. Jiren would be much better for that position. He's stronger and much more serious and attentive. Plus, he's always with a blank mind. Always calm and ready to fight, okay? I guess you want to make that suggestion to Xenosama. Beerus would intervene, stealing the glances of all the angels. This is a conversation between angels. Don't interfere, okay? Margarita would say. Seriously, Mr. Beerus is right, and I support him, Wiss would say. If you like the idea of Jiren being a supreme guardian so much, go tell him. Margarita would be really annoyed by Wiss's comment. Unless you know that Xenosama's decisions are not questioned, Beerus would say. How dare you talk to me that way? Margarita would say, furious. Margarita would raise her hand, carrying Guy, but Wiss would grab her by the wrist. I don't think I need to tell you, Wiss would say, seriously. What's wrong? Both Sinosama would ask. Great Lord, we were just playing, Wiss would say with a special smile. Yes, we were playing, Margarita would say. That's good, let's play hide and seek, Sinosama would say. Yes, let's play hide and seek the other Xenosama would say. The angels would start playing hide and seek under the request of the kings of everything. Wiss and Beerus would hide in the same place. I must make sure he doesn't fall asleep like last time, Wiss would say. Don't be silly, I couldn't fall asleep on a day like today, Beerus would say. I'm worried about the other angels, especially Margarita and Mojito. I feel they have something to do with the deaths of the guardians. I didn't want to say it, but I have the same feeling, Wiss would say. That must be why Goku's presence bothers the others so much. Meanwhile, he would spend the whole day, almost five years inside the time room. Goku was ready for his last fight. He wore a uniform identical to Daishinkin's. Alright, Mr. Goku, since we are about to leave, I want to see everything you've learned, Daishinkin would say. Alright, Goku would say as he gets on his guard. No, not like that, Daishinkin would say. What's wrong? Goku would ask, confused. I want him to fight with everything, to use all his strength. It's a test of your skills. Take it seriously, Daishinkin would say. I understand, Goku would say seriously. Goku would be raising his key to the maximum, thus managing to use the Ultra Instinct transformation being left with white hair. Perfect, I'm ready, Goku would say. That's the way I like it. Daishinkin would say as he saw Goku using the Ultra Instinct Master. Goku was ready to perform his demonstration. He would throw himself full force towards Daishinkin, coming in with a powerful kick. Daishinkin would manage to resist the attack like it was nothing. Not bad! Goku would attack with a fist strike. But Daishinkin would manage to dodge the attack again, then Goku would attack with a barrage of fist strikes, one after another, but none of his attacks would have any effect. Daishinkin would dodge each one of them with great agility, something that was to be expected. In a moment, Goku would launch a fist strike charged with Ki. Daishinkin would hold the attack with just the tip of his finger. A great roar would be produced throughout the room of time. I see you have achieved good results, Daishinkin would say with a smile. There's only one problem. Don't tell me you're still at it. Now that I'm so strong, I don't really have anyone to fight with. The angels are too strong for me, but the gods of destruction were left behind me. It won't be the same anymore. Don't worry, the 12 universes are great. At some point, some warrior of your stature will appear, Daishinkin would say. I hope so. For now, the most important thing is to fulfill my role as guardian. Besides finding out who was able to kill the previous guardians, Leave that to me. Not anyone could accomplish such a feat. Remember all the advice I've given you, and I hope you take it wisely. Sure, I will, Goku would say. Finally, the day had arrived. Goku and Daishinkin would come out of the time room, surprising everyone. It can't be, Vados would say in astonishment. Is that really Mr. Goku's power? Whis would say, surprised. What the hell? Beerus would say, puzzled. Goku, you're back. Zenosama would say. Yes, you're back, would say the other Zenosama. That's right, and I'm ready to be your guardian, Goku would say excitedly.
All the angels would murmur amongst themselves, speculating about Goku's new power. It would only arouse more rancor against them. Is there a problem here? Daishinkin would ask seriously, and all the angels would be silent. That's the way I like it. Alright, first of all, I want to thank everyone for taking care of Xeno-sama in my absence. From now on, I'll be the new guardian of the king of everything, and it will be a pleasure to occupy this position. These would be the words of the new guardian of Xeno-sama, Goku. He even learned to speak, Beerus would say. The atmosphere was still tense. The angels didn't look favorably on Goku. Then, Daishinkin would intervene. I think a cordial greeting wouldn't hurt. Daishinkin would say seriously to cut with so much coldness on the part of all the angels. The angels would make a slight bow in the form of respect. All would leave from there except Whis and Beerus. Mr. Goku, what a great change, Whis would say. He's finally gotten the better of me, Beerus would say. Thanks guys, anyway, I wouldn't have made it here if it wasn't for you, Goku would say. Your teachings and experience are what got me here. Goku, you're going to take care of us now, Azino-sama would say. Yes, you're going to take care of us, and also, we're going to play for a long time, Zeno-sama would say. Of course, kings of everything, Goku would say. Whis and Beerus would return to their planet, surprised by the new Goku. So, Mr. Goku has become quite the god, Whis would say. I'm just worried about how long it'll take him to screw up, Beerus would say. Don't worry about it. I'm sure my father will be aware of everything, Whis would say. Meanwhile, Goku would begin his duties as guardian. He would constantly watch over the Xeno-sama while they played with each other. After several days, everything seemed to be in order. Even Daishinkin was keeping an eye on everything, because he suspected that another attack was coming. What was that? Goku would ask. What was that? Xeno-sama would ask. Yeah, what a thing! The other Xeno-sama would say. Nothing, it was just my imagination, Goku would say with laughter. Damn, I drew too much attention. I didn't have to say anything out loud, Goku would think. Goku would walk away for a minute. He would try to feel someone's key, but he didn't feel anything. I'm sure I felt a presence, Goku would say. Goku would close his eyes for a moment while the Xenosama were distracted and would create a copy of him. The copy would leave there and start going around investigating. After going all around the palace, he would find nothing. How strange, the copy of Goku would say. Suddenly, something would hit the copy from behind, and it would disappear completely. Goku was watching the Xenosama. He would feel a discomfort in his head. His nose would bleed. When his copy died, all the memories of it would come to him. Who was it? Goku would wonder as he wiped the blood from his nose. Daishinkin would arrive, surprising Goku. Was it... Goku would say, until Daishinkin, with a gesture, would manage to make Goku keep quiet. That was very thoughtful of him, Daishinkin would say. So it was about you, Goku would say more calmly. Indeed, Daishinkin would say. Try not to talk out loud next time. A real enemy would run away and you wouldn't be able to catch him. Yes, I know. I realized it seconds later, Goku would say. The Xenosama would be very distracted among themselves playing. They hardly gave a thought to Goku and Daishinkin. Any news? Goku would ask. Nothing at the moment, but I'll keep an eye out, Daishinkin would say. Okay, Goku would say. Goku would continue with his job as Xenosama's guardian. He would keep an eye on everything for several days, but he didn't feel any threat. Thanks to this ability that Daishinkin taught me to sense every last leaf that moves on the entire planet, there's no way for something to happen without me noticing it, Goku would think. Suddenly, Goku would sense something, move his hand nimbly, and delicately hold a needle. None of the Xenosama had noticed. Goku would pay attention to the direction the needle came from. I know where it came from, but it's the last place it would stay, Goku would think. Goku would disappear in an instant. He would reach the sky at the edge of Xenosama's planet. It's this way, Goku would think. Suddenly, Goku would move his hand to the side. In an instant, he had hit, held by the neck. I knew it, Goku would say. It would try to move, but it would become impossible. Let go of me, it would say. Tell me why you wanted to kill Xenosama with this, Goku would say seriously as he would show the needle. You idiots! I'm guarding the place! Vado sent me! It would say. 
Goku would punch its neck, knocking him out, then return to him. What happened? Both Xenosamas would say. Looks like I found the killer, Goku would say. Let's make him disappear, would say a Xenosama. Yeah, let him disappear, the other Xenosama would say. No, not yet, Goku would say. Why? Both Xenosama would ask. Because we have to find out who sent him. I highly doubt Hit has any intentions of doing it on his own. Hit is a hired killer. He doesn't kill if no one gives him the order and he gets paid for it. Well, all right, would say a Xenosama. Yeah, that's fine, the other Xenosama would say. Hit would awaken with difficulty. He was suffering from a severe headache. What am I doing here? Hit would say, confused. You better tell me who sent you, Goku would say. It was Vados, but he didn't send me to kill him, he sent me to watch over him, Hit would say. Vados? Goku would say. Daishinkin would appear out of nowhere. I heard everything. I hope she's not lying or she'll have a very bad time. You can ask her, Hit would say. I said I would never reveal her identity, but I think the occasion calls for it. What exactly did Vados say? Goku would ask. That he would kill everything that entered Xenosama's planet without properly introducing himself, Hit would say. Goku would show the needle. Explain this, it looks like Frost's needles. I have nothing to do with this, I wasn't even on the planet. I remain in a spiritual state above space near the planet. Goku, did you manage to detect the needle in time? Daishinkin would ask. That's right, it appeared out of nowhere. I only felt the needle, there was nothing else, then I felt Hit's presence. Well, I felt a certain distortion in space. I think that made me tense up and for a moment I lost my spiritual state. Vados, can you come? Daishinkin would ask when using his staff. Sure, I'll be right there, Vados would say. Vados would arrive in an instant. Well, I see it's because of Hit. Sorry, I had to tell them you sent me. Vados, did you send him? Both Xenosamas would ask. That's right, I have suspicions about who could be the murderer of the other guardians. That's why I sent him to keep watch, Vados would say. Explain this, Goku would say as he shows Frost's needle to him. Wow, Frost's needle, Vados would say. I felt the distortion in space, as if gravity affected it. I think that has something to do with it. That's right, Analasa, Goku would say. Excuse me, Vados would say. Analasa, the merger of Universe 3. He could create dimensional portals. That's the only thing I can think of for the needle to have appeared out of nowhere, Goku would say. I guess they must be going to Universe 3, would say Vados. Daishinkin, can you stay? Goku would ask. Of course, I don't mind covering for him if it's to find out who's the one behind such an attack. I can take him if you wish, Vados would say. Yes, that would be great, Goku would exclaim. Mr. Hit, I would like you to continue with the function my daughter gave you, Daishinkin would say. Sure, no problem, Hit would mention. If you misbehave, we'll make you disappear, Xenosama would say. Yes, if you misbehave, delete it, the other Xenosama would say. I understand, Hit would say, swallowing saliva from nerves. First, we'll make a stop by Universe 6. We need to talk to Mr. Frost, Vados would say. Okay, we're on our way. Vados and Goku would go to Planet Sadala in Universe 6 to talk to Kaba. Sure, that's definitely Frost's. We have him under pressure. We managed to imprison him in a special place for strong people like him. It would be very useful for us to see him, Vados would mention. Our friends would go to Frost's cell and find him dead. That's not true, Kaba would say in astonishment. No doubt they silenced him. Maybe they stole his needles, Goku would say. But how? How could he get into the cell? Kaba would ask in bewilderment. There's no way anyone could get in here without leaving a trace. Goku and Vados would observe each other. They understood that it was the same situation as the attack towards Xenosama. Thanks for everything, Kaba. Vados! Right away, Vados would say. Vados and Goku would go to the planet of Kaioshin in Universe 3. Curiously, the god of destruction, Mosko, and his angel, Kampari, were there. Brother, what are you doing here? Vados would ask seriously. I was going to ask what you're doing here. I remind you that it is my universe, Kambari would say. 
We want to know what happened to Analasa, Goku would mention. Mosko would start talking with cybernetic sounds. Mr. Mosko, don't say that, he would say. Mule, if you keep talking from that metal thing, I'll take you out by force, Goku would say. Mule would open the robot and get out. Hey, have more respect. I always communicate like this. Wow, but you didn't take long to get out of there, Goku would say with a chuckle. You bastard, Mule would say. This is serious. They tried to kill Xenosama again, and we suspected distortion in space, Vados would say. I understand. That's something only Enelasa could do. But it's a fusion of four of my men. You should ask Dr. Paparoni how he fuses his portal system, he would say. Goku, with a terrifying and threatening look towards E, would mention, Bring it right now! Dr. Pepperoni would be summoned by E to answer for the portal system. Meanwhile, Daishinkin would be with Zeno-sama while Hit guarded the surroundings. Hit was in his spiritual form without being seen by anyone, but something would break his concentration. Hit would lose his state and something would cut him in two. Hit would stop time by instinct. He would see a sword that ended up coming out of his side, but he could not do anything about it. The time jump would end and Hit would fall dead in Zeno-sama's planet. Just near the door of his palace, Daishinkin would see Hit's body from his staff. How did they kill him? Daishinkin would wonder. Daishinkin would call Vados to tell him the news. Vados, I'm sorry to tell you that they killed your man, Daishinkin would tell him. Who was it? Vados would ask. I don't know, but whoever it was cut him in two, Daishinkin would answer. It can't be. Not anyone could kill someone like Hit just like that. Goku would say. Goku would look and ask at Kampari. If you have something to say, do it, Kampari would say. I want Paparoni here immediately, Goku would say seriously. Mr. Goku, I respect that you are the guardian of Xenosama, but we can't tolerate this kind of audacity. If you have nothing to hide, bring Paparoni here, Vados would say seriously. Paparoni would arrive and start talking to Goku about the technology they used to create the portals. Although Paparoni was the creator of that invention, he said that others could have also created it. As I told him, it is only a distortion in space. The only thing I can say is that the more distance there is between the portals, the more energy is required, Paparoni would clarify. So either he was close, or he was someone very strong, Goku would say. I don't know who could do it, but not even someone like Jiren could create such a portal from another planet," Pepperoni would emphasize. That matches the fighting level of the Guardian Killer, Vados would say. Kampari would discreetly walk away from there and with his Bakulo would call Margarita. We have problems, Kampari would say and show Goku with E in Pepperoni. That's not true! How can he be with his nose there? Margarita would say. I don't know. But this is getting dangerous, Kampari would say. Who are you talking to? Vados would ask. Yes, and why are you moving away from us? Are you afraid that we will listen? I don't know what you're talking about, Kampari would say. Come on, stop pretending. You're hiding something. I remind you that you're talking to an angel. Remember that I am. If you don't want to give the explanation to Goku, do it with me. Damn, Kampari would think, annoyed. Kampari's attitude would leave Goku and Vados even more suspicious. Suddenly, Mojito and Margarita would appear. What are you doing here? Vados would ask. Hey, I don't like this at all, he would say. Mojito would throw himself towards E to attack, but Vados with his staff would save him just in time by repelling his attack. So this is about betrayal, Vados would say. I... I don't believe it. He would say. Hey, what's going on here? Mule would ask terrified. Finish them off once and for all! Kampari would shout. Goku would use Ultra Instinct and dash towards Mojito, but Margarita and Kampari would stand in front of him, cutting him off. Get out of my way! Goku would say. Margarita and Kampari would hit Goku's stomach hard. He would be out of breath and fall to the ground, losing his transformation, while Vatos and Mojito would be fighting each other. Good heavens, what the hell are you doing? Vados would ask in bewilderment. This idiot Goku ruined our plans, Kampari would say. 
You dare to support him? Okay? Margarita would say, annoyed. I'm on Xenosama's side, but I see that you are traitors. E, Mule, get out of here! Both gods would try to get out of there, but Margarita would place herself in front of them. With a blow from the edge of her hand, she would cut off B's head. That's enough! Margarita would take Mule and throw him against a wall. Enjoy your seconds of life! Without Kaioshin, you die! Vados should face three angels, Margarita, Mojito, and Campari. Join us! We will kill Xenosama and rule Los Angeles! If our father knew about this, he would be very disappointed in you, Vados would reply. Then we have no choice, Kambari would say. The three would attack with everything to Vados, the angel of Universe 6, and there would be serious problems, since alone he could not sustain the fight. Little by little, they would wear him down, while on the planet of Xenosama, things would get more complicated. Kus would be flying above the planet, would drop a ball of energy that would cover the entire planet. Daishinkin and Xenosama would be frozen in time under that effect. At least with this, we will make sure that our father doesn't discover our plans, Kus would say as he walked out of there. Vados was about to fall. It was getting harder and harder for him to keep his posture. This is something unforgivable. I will make sure that our father punishes them, Vados would say. That won't happen. Kus already took care of that. He froze our father in time, so he won't bother anyone. You are a bunch of bastards. Vados would raise his key to the maximum. He would launch a key attack towards the three of them, but each of them would counter the attack with another key attack. Vados could not resist the clash of powers for long. He was about to receive the impact. Suddenly, Vados would disappear as if by magic. There would be an explosion in the area where he was. Where did he go? Margarita would ask herself in bewilderment. Wiss had saved her at the right moment. She had Vados in her arms. Brother, Vados would say exhausted. Don't worry, I came as soon as I could, Wiss would say as he laid Vados on the ground. Wiss, get out of here! You don't stand a chance against them, Vados would warn. I can't leave without trying. Wiss, always meddling in the affairs of other universes. I'm not as selfish as you are. Wiss would begin to raise his key to the maximum. He was ready to fight. You may be stronger than us, but that won't give you victory. Remember that we are three against one. I'm waiting for them. Wiss would throw himself towards them while Vados watched the fight. Wiss showed great skills by the variety of techniques, but it was not enough. Little by little, the three angels would wear Wiss down, although clearly Wiss was not an easy opponent. He managed to connect attacks on all three, and even if it damaged them moderately. In a moment, Margarita would arrive with a flying kick, launching Wiss far away. Mojito would receive him, holding him by the neck, and would create a key ball to attack him at close range. I've had enough of you, Mojito would say, but a key ball would hit Mojito's back. Vados, in spite of his state, would stand up. He wouldn't give up so easily. We will fight both of us! I would like to refuse, but I have no choice, Wiss would say. Between the five of them, the fight would begin even more intense than before. The three traitors would have trouble sustaining the fight, but they could fight both of them anyway. On the other hand, Mule would go to E's head and place it on his body. Luckily, it doesn't know you're an android, Mule would say. Don't raise your voice, they must think we are dead, E would say. E and Mule would flee from there. Although Mule should leave without his robot, the fight was still going on, but Wiss and Vados were not about to fall. We have to kill them, okay? Margarita would say. No need, they are our brothers after all, Mojito would say. If we don't do it, they will give us away. Let's kill them now, okay? Margarita would respond, and between the three of them, they would launch a key ray each. Vados and Wiz would answer in the same way, countering the attacks. Despite being three versus two, they managed to hold it, but little by little, Wiz and Vados would lose advantage. I still can't believe they want to kill us, Vados would say. With Margarita involved, I can expect anything, Wiz would answer. Wiz and Vados would hear footsteps behind them. Goku was on his feet. The guardian of Xenosama kept a grim expression, but despite his state, he would not give up. I heard everything, Goku would say as his eyes would light up white. I won't spare them. Goku would use the Ultra Instinct, surpassing his own limits. He would unleash a great power never seen before. 
I can't believe it. It's awesome. Whis would be amazed. Kame! Goku would say as he prepares a special technique. Kame! Hold on, Vados. Maybe we can do it. Ah! Goku would shout as he supports Vados and Whis. Little by little, our friend's attack would gain advantage and surprise their opponents. Are you matching Los Angeles? Kambari would say terrified. After a great moment of tension, Goku would use the Kaioken, sacrificing his energy. Despite how dangerous it is, he was willing to do anything to save Whis and Vados. Suddenly, the attack would gain advantage. Margarita, Mojito, and Kumpari would be swallowed by the attack. The three would be displaced several meters. Far from being defeated, they would fall to the ground in terrible condition. In that distraction, Whis and Vados would manage to flee with an unconscious Goku. Minutes later, we see Whis and Vados arrive with Goku to the planet of Beerus. Both angels were in terrible conditions. What happened to them? Beerus would ask in bewilderment. A betrayal, Whis would answer and fall down, fainting. It can't be! Who would be able to do something like this to you? Beerus would say, terrified. They were, Vados would mention, but would faint. Damn it! How do I fix this? Beerus would take the three of them to his castle and put them in comfortable places. He would tend to their wounds, even though he didn't know how to perform some kind of healing technique. What happened? The oracle fish would ask upon seeing the scene. Useless fish! You should have predicted something like this! Now get some medicine! We need to cure them as soon as possible! Don't think that because I'm an oracle I can see everything, the oracle fish would say. Bring medicine or I'll make you sushi, Beerus warned. Moments later, Whis would awaken, albeit with difficulty. Come on, Goku. They're fine. I gave them some medicine, but they're sleeping now. Beerus would mention. You? Using medicine? Whis would ask, confused. Yes, although I don't know what I gave them, Beerus would say as he showed some vials. That's for monkey fever from Planet Miro, and that's a decongestant! I told you that's no good, the oracle fish would say. Shut up, you didn't help at all, Beerus would say angrily. Would you please be quiet? My head hurts so much, Whis would say. Just try to rest. We'll take care of everything, the oracle fish would say. I'll take care of the medicine. I can't heal the bodies of Los Angeles with my powers. You could at least cure Goku. He's not an angel. No, I can't heal him. What are you talking about? Beerus would ask, confused. Something happened with Mr. Goku. He's not the same as before, Whis would say. Meanwhile, Margarita, Mojito, Kumpari, and Koos were gathered to continue with their plans. We are four against eight. This is getting out of hand, Koos would mention. If we don't act now, the others will attack us, Mojito would say. I have an idea, but it's a bit risky, Margarita would say. Wait, what do you want to do? Kumpari would ask, not very convinced with everything that was happening. What will happen now that the angels have revealed themselves? Will they assassinate Zeno-sama? And more importantly, will Goku and the others be able to stop the traitor's plans? Goku and the others had just recovered. They had to find a solution to the situation before the traitor angels got ahead of them. But things would not be so easy. I can't believe it, Whis would say in astonishment. What's wrong? Goku would ask. The planet of Xenosama, Whis would say. Our friends would observe Xenosama's planets. They would see Daishinkin at the gate. He was not moving a single millimeter as he was suspended in time. Someone knocked Xenosama out of the game, Whis would say. But who could it have been? Vados would ask. It's clear that it was one of those three, but I don't know if there are more traitors, Goku would say. Gosh, this is going to get worse. Goku, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but what would the angels who are not involved in this think? Beerus would say seriously. What do you mean? Goku would ask, confused. Mr. Goku, it's more than obvious, Vados would say. The other angels will blame you. Come on, they can't be serious, Goku would say. Well, I would if I didn't know all this, Vados would say. Anyone would say that you killed the Guardians to keep that position, and for that reason, you befriended Xenosama previously, Whis would say. Remember that you have not always been looked upon favorably. 
Wissenvados would watch towards the sky. They had sensed it. Each of the angels would arrive with their respective god of destruction and Kaioshin. Damn it, they're going to blame me, Goku would say. There he is, he was the one who froze time on Xenosama's planet, Margarita would say. That's not true, you're the traitors, Wiss would say. Kampari, Mojito, Margarita, you went to kill Xenosama and you attacked us for investigating you, would say Vados. That's not true, okay, Margarita would say. We traveled to Universe 3 to find out about portal technology, but they got scared and that's why they came, Goku would say. They also killed Hit. Hit was watching Xenosama. I think Vados is collaborating with him, Mojito would say. Besides, clearly after all, those two defended Goku with everything, Kampari would say. They can't be serious, they're fucking cheaters, Goku would say furious as his key burst out. The rest of the angels were doubtful, although you could tell they were leaning towards blaming Goku, but Koos would complicate things even more. I can't believe that Mr. Goku is the blame for everything, Koos would say. Whis and Vados would stand in front of Goku to back him up. All the other angels were against him. Kampari, where are your gods? Goose would ask. Lord Goku killed them. He killed the Kaioshin and consequently his god of destruction died, Kampari would say. Damn liar, Goku would say out of his mind. Goku would throw himself full force towards Kampari, but Mojito would cross his path, kicking Goku and giving him a hard blow. Don't try anything strange, dirty mortal, Mojito would say seriously. Whis, Vados, you'd better get out of the way, okay? Margarita would say. Lord Goku must be eliminated for treason. Stop, he would say as he introduced himself. With him was Mule. Wait a minute, they were supposed to be dead, Harris would say in astonishment. That's what Margarita thought when he cut off my head, he would say. Good, you're alive, Goku would say happily. Damn, he ruined everything. Margarita would think furiously. Wow, I guess Goku was right after all, Beerus would say with a triumphant smile. Margarita cut off E's head. I just didn't know that E is an android, Mule would say. E would place his hands over his face and remove his head. Margarita, Mojito, and Campari are the traitors, E would say, pointing at them. Damn you, I trusted you all my life, Mule would say annoyed with Campari. The three angels would be surrounded by the rest as they were in the eye of the storm. Koos would feign surprise, not wanting to be left in suspicion. Margarita, I can't believe it, Velmood would say. How do we know that your gods have nothing to do with it? Quitella would ask. Hey, what do you mean by that? We had nothing to do with those plans. Mojito acted on his own, Sidra would say. Well, someone else had to act to freeze time on Xenosama's planet. Besides, don't forget that we have to free him. Don't be silly, this is our chance. Or do you want to keep Xenosama? Margarita would say, trying to get allies. You put us at risk with all this, Wiz would say. Damn, Margarita would say, furious. I say we lock them up until we find out if anyone else participated with them, Goose would say. Sister, what are you doing? Margarita would say, furious. Kusa's somber expression would give her to understand that she had to keep silent. Are they planning something? Margarita would think. I don't know about you, but I don't think any god of destruction would be brave enough to conspire against Xenosama. Yes, I think so too, Quitella would say. Then let's lock these three up while we look for a way to free Xenosama and our father from that temporal prison, Wiss would say. Kampari, Margarita, and Mojito would be in trouble. The three would be locked up by the rest of the angels, while Koos would try to help them from the outside. Our friends would leave the angels in a celestial prison, where even they could not escape, and would head towards Xenosama's planet. There they would see the planet covered by a strange barrier. I've never seen such a temporary prison, Wiss would say. I am in doubt whether time is frozen or just influences extremely slow inside, Harris would say. Are you saying it's something like a time room? Goku would ask. Yes, something like that, but I don't know. You would have to keep an eye on it to notice if it moves slowly, Harris would say. At the moment, it's hard to know how to remove this when we don't know what caused it, Wiss would say. Wiss would rest his hand on the barrier, 
He would try to put his hand inside, but the pressure was really strong. Impossible. The discontinuity in time does not allow me to pass, Wiss would say. Anyway, if you go inside, you won't be able to do anything, Vados would say. Damn, this is really bad, and these three traitors don't want to talk, Goku would say. I guess we'll have to investigate out of here to find a solution, Wiss would say. Each of the gods would return to their universe in search of some tool that would help them free Daishinkin and Zeno-sama from that temporary prison. Then, Koos would go to the prison where the three angels were imprisoned. Wow, so you decided to come after all, right? Margarita would say in a bad mood. Don't make those comments. We wouldn't gain anything if the four of us were in here, Koos would say. I'm going to get them out of here. If you do, the four of us will end up locked up, Kambari would say. That's why we have to attack, Koos would say. We managed to confuse our brothers. We can be victorious if we attack them one by one. Are you sure? Mojito would ask. It's a big risk. It's all or nothing. If we don't do it, Zeno-sama will disappear then, Koos would explain. I guess we have nothing to lose, Mojito would ask. Koos would start to raise his key. He should make a great effort to free his brothers from that prison. Meanwhile, Vados was in the beyond of Universe 6. He was looking for hits, more than anything his soul. Vados should go to hell to be able to find him, since he was sent there for being a hired killer. What a surprise, Hit would say coldly. Mr. Hit, I heard about your death and I decided to come to see you. Do you know who it was? Vados would ask. I saw her, but for a second, for a second, but I saw her, would say Hit. He was unable to stop time at the right moment. Even though it was late to survive, it gave him time to see her. It was the universe of Angel 10. Wait a minute, Goose? Vados would say terrified. I don't know her name. She is the smallest of you, Hit would say. That wretch was saved. She knows how I freeze time on Xenosama's planet, Vados would say. I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about, Hit would say. So I guess she did it after my death? I can't believe it. I have to stop her as soon as possible, Vados would say. I'm sorry, I thought you were going to get me out of here, Hit would say. If I do it now, he'll die. I'll do it when this is over. Vados would say as he would get out of there. Come to think of it, I'd rather stay here, Hit would say as he realized that it was serious. At that moment, the three imprisoned angels would arrive to Universe 7. Whis! Beerus would call out in terror. Goku and Whis would instantly get out, but Beerus would be pierced by a key beam coming from Mojito. Beerus! Goku would say furiously. I can't believe it! Whis would say alertly. Vados would warn all his brothers that Koos belonged to the plot of the traitors. Everyone would begin to mobilize, although, in a way, it was late. Goku would raise his key to the maximum using the Ultra Instinct. He would throw everything towards the three angels, but Koos would arrive with a kick that would knock him down. Koos, you too? Wis would say. Anyway, they've finished. Everyone already knows that. What are you talking about? Koos would ask. Vados just got out of Universe 6 Hell, where Hit confessed that you killed him, Wiss would say. We all know that already. Damn, we wasted a lot of time with that. You three take care of Wiss. That way we'll gain an advantage by taking them out one by one, Koos would say. I won't allow that, Goku would say. Goku would throw everything towards Koos, but the angel would grab him by the face. Space-time would start to distort around them. Suddenly, Goku and Koos would be somewhere out of nowhere. What the hell? Goku would say confused. This is the X zone, Koos would say. A place away from everything, where we can fight without anyone bothering us. Don't think you'll get out of this alive. I swear I'll exterminate you and your traitorous brothers, Goku would say furiously. Please, what makes you think you're on the level of an angel? Koos would ask. Just because you managed to use Alter Instinct doesn't mean you're worthy of walking beside us. Goku would exploit his key to the maximum. He was ready to fight. Goku would throw everything towards Koos. He would attack her with a rain of blows, but none of them would have any effect. No matter what Goku did, Koos would beat him in speed. In a moment, Koos would hit Goku's stomach hard. He would cough up blood and could barely move. The idea of bringing you to the X-Zone is not to get anyone into our fight. Koos would say. 
and so that when I kill you, your soul will be lost in nothingness with no chance of being revived. You don't understand. No matter what you do or how strong you are, you can never beat me, Goku would say. We'll see about that, Goose would say. Meanwhile, on the planet of Beerus, Whis was being brutally attacked by the three angels. All the brothers would be on the lookout for them, but it wouldn't give them time to get there. That's what you get for supporting mortals, right? The time has come for the angels to rule and nothing can prevent it, Mojito would say. Kampari would reach Whis with a strong kick in his chest that would throw him away. Whis would cough blood for the strong harem. Fighting against three was too much for him, even if it was better for them. While in the X zone, Kus was tearing Goku to pieces. He didn't give him a chance, not even to defend himself. Goku would lose his transformation. He was no longer in conditions to fight. Now you will stay here, rot in the X zone for eternity, Kus said. Kus would walk out of there, leaving Goku alone in the X zone. No way! I have to find a way out of here! Goku would say in agony, about to die. Many years ago, Frieza had been planning to destroy the planet Vegeta, since he feared the appearance of a supposed legendary Super Saiyan. He had talked to Beerus about his decision, giving him the warning about that legend and the danger that the Saiyans represented for him. Beerus had accepted since he had dreamed about the Super Saiyan God, but he had not told Frieza about it, he had only talked about it with Whis. Some days later, Frieza would have gathered all the Saiyans on planet Vegeta to destroy them altogether. Before executing his plan, Beerus would arrive in the company of Daishinkin. Frieza, change of plans. Planet Vegeta will remain standing, Beerus would mention. But I just got them all together. I don't know if I could get them all together again, Frieza would reply in annoyance. You dare to disobey me? Beerus would ask in annoyance. Of course not, great Beerus, Frieza would say as he bowed, although inside he felt a great hatred. That clown Beerus has had enough of me. I don't want to be under his orders anymore, Frieza would think. Hi, Priest. You can visit Planet Vegeta all you want, Beerus would mention. You are very kind, would answer Daishinkin, who would descend to the Planet Vegeta, looking for the optimal Saiyan woman to have a child. I don't understand. I thought you agreed with me to prevent the legendary Super Saiyan from appearing, Frieza would say in amazement. And I still agree with you, but Daishinkin has been very demanding in wanting to keep this planet alive. Just so you know, he is the father of Whis, the high priest who is Zeno-sama's right-hand man. I don't know if you understand the situation, Beerus would clarify seriously. Father of Whis? Frieza would say in terror. Just make him angry again, and I won't be the one to destroy you. To tell you the truth, the power of the high priest is beyond my imagination, Beerus would say. Out of your imagination? Wow, that complicates things, Frieza would think. Daishinkin would walk around Planet Vegeta. No one would see him, since he was invisible to everyone. After a few hours, he would find a Saiyan woman that caught his attention. It was Jine. Wow, she's very pretty, but above all, she stands out among all the Saiyans, Daishinkin would think. Jine would be working in a butcher shop alone until Daishinkin would appear in front of her. Good morning. Daishinkin would say gently. What the hell? Jine would take the blade from the kitchen and attack Daishinkin without thinking. Daishinkin would hold the blade between two of her fingers. I see that you are very strong, woman. That pleases me very much, Daishinkin would say. Then he would split the blade in two. Jine would retreat a few meters. She had noted Daishinkin's great strength at the moment he had broken his blade. Don't be scared. I won't do anything to you. On the contrary, I have come to meet you because you have captivated me, 
My name is Daishinkin. Daishinkin would introduce himself. From that day on, Daishinkin and Jain would fall in love. Jain would go on to live on Zenosama's planet. They would have a son whom they would name Goku, and he would be a great friend of Zenosama. Forty years later, you would see Goku being trained by Whis, who was his teacher designated by Daishinkin. Goku would try to hit Whis, but he could not connect any of his attacks. You better take your training more seriously, this way you'll never catch up to me, Whis would say as he moved from side to side. We'll see about that, Goku would smile. Goku would begin to raise his ki to the maximum by managing to transform into Super Saiyan God Phase 2. I told you no transformations, Whis would say annoyed. Goku would ignore him and attack Whis with everything. Goku's punches were very powerful, but just slightly faster than his base state. Goku is so obsessed with his transformations that he forgets the most elementary details of a fight, Whis would think. In a moment, one of Goku's attacks would be nothing short of touching Whis. The angel would narrowly dodge the blow. I see you're having a hard time, Goku would say, taunting Whis. Goku would disappear for a moment and reappear behind Whis. He would try to attack him from behind, but Whis would move his head back and break Goku's nose. Damn, that hurts, Goku would say, holding his nose as it wouldn't stop bleeding. That's what you get for cheating in your training, Whis would mention in annoyance. In a carelessness of the angel, Goku would manage to connect a fist punch to his face. Although it had done almost no damage, making contact had been a triumph for him. Good, I did it, I touched you. Goku would celebrate. That's not fair. If you have transformed, I told you clearly that the training should be without transformations, Whis would say, annoyed. Face it, Whis. Your little brother is giving you a blow you didn't expect, Beerus would say, mocking his angel. He's right, Beerus, Goku would laugh. Goku's stomach would start rumbling. He was really hungry. Wow, guess who's not going to cook and not feed them for cheating, Whis would say, annoyed. No, please don't do that, Goku would ask for forgiveness. I won't do it again, I promise. Hey, I'll go without food too if you don't cook, Beerus would say, annoyed with Whis. I can't believe it, you both look like children, Whis would say. Whis's staff would ring, it was a call from Daishinkin. Wow, our father is calling, I hope nothing bad happened, Whis would say. It's been 10 years since we talked to dad. You could say something like, you miss him, Goku would say. You're barely 40 years old. When you get over the first 200,000 years, 10 years will be nothing to you, Whis would say. Whis would finally answer the call. Hello, father. How good it is to hear from you, Whis would greet. Hi, dad, Goku would say hello. How are my children, would greet Daishinkin. Very well, even though your dear Goku is cheating a bit in his training, he has made good progress. Don't mind him, I just connected my first punch on him, Goku would say. Wow, that's good news. I was hoping for something like that when you turned 500, Daishinkin would say. I need Goku here, would you be so kind as to come? We'll be right there, Whis would say. Wait, Goku would say. Goku would bring his fingers to his forehead. He would start to concentrate. Is something wrong, Goku? Daishinkin would ask. Quiet, I'm testing something, Goku would say. Goku would be a few minutes in the same position with nothing happening. Goku has been trying a technique to instantly transport himself, but it hasn't worked out for him, Wiz would say. I can't do it. It'll be another day, Goku laughed. Ah, what a thing with you, Wiz would say. Whis would travel with Goku to Zenosama's planet. Daishinkin, Jain, and also Zenosama would be waiting for them. Hello, we're here, Goku would say. Son, it's been so long, Jain would say as she would reach her son and hug him. Sorry, I've been training a lot, Goku would say. I managed to beat Whis today. Really, you've become very strong. Congratulations, son, Jain would say cheerfully. Ah, he only succeeded because he cheated me. And how's everything around here? Goku would ask. Boring, that's why I called you, Zenosama would say. Hello, Zenosama, it's been a long time since we've played, Goku would say. That's right, let's play, Zenosama would say. 
Goku and Zeno-sama would go play together while Daishinken, Jain, and Whis would talk to each other. I imagine the call must be for something important and not just for Goku to play with the king of everything, Whis would say. That's right. It's about the prophecy of the legendary Saiyan God and all those rumors that are going around everywhere, Daishinkin would say. I thought those prophecies were about Goku, Whis would say. We thought so since he is half angel and half Saiyan, but we understand that there is a Saiyan with a power out of the ordinary. What do you mean by out of the ordinary? Whis would ask. A wild Saiyan with no training whatsoever, matching the power of a god of destruction. Daishinkin would say. Is he that strong? Goku would ask since he had overheard the conversation. I want to see it! Son, first of all, overhearing conversations is rude, Jain would say, annoyed. Secondly, if we call you, it's to warn you that for nothing in the world will you fight him, Daishinkin would say. But Dad, I want to fight strong people. Whis is not funny, he's boring, Goku would say. I think I've been more than clear. Daishinkin would say. I want to see Goku fight someone like him, Zeno-sama would say. Right? I want to fight someone on my level, Goku would say. Great lord, don't you think it's a better idea to explore that sign's nature a bit? Daishinkin would ask. No, Zeno-sama would reply. Daishinkin and Jain would watch each other. They knew that if Zeno-sama wanted to see Goku fight, there was nothing else to do. Well, I guess we have to go to Planet Vegeta, Daishinkin would say. Meanwhile, on Planet Vegeta, Vegeta was the king since his father had died and was considered the strongest Saiyan on the planet, until that legendary Saiyan appeared. Vegeta was very furious about the rumors that a Saiyan had surpassed him, so along with his troop, he would go out in search of him. After a long expedition, Vegeta would find him. It was Broly. Wow, so you're that supposed Saiyan who claims to be stronger than me? Vegeta would say with a ruthless smile. Broly was eating a big piece of meat. He was looking at Vegeta with hatred, but he wouldn't say anything to him. Hey, you better talk, or are you mute? Vegeta would ask. Broly would stand up. The men surrounding Vegeta would be intimidated by his large size. He's huge, one of the soldiers would say. Wait, isn't he the son of Paragus? Another one of the soldiers would ask. Broly would approach Vegeta. The soldiers would start to back away, except Vegeta, who wasn't scared of Broly. Hey, what are you, cowards? Vegeta would say, annoyed. Attack! Vegeta would order. But, sir, a terrified soldier would say. Vegeta would launch a key beam at the soldier, piercing his chest from side to side. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's cowards, Vegeta would say with contempt. I said attack, Vegeta would order. The rest of Vegeta's soldiers would throw themselves at Broly in fear of being executed, but Broly would not move. He would receive all the attacks as if nothing. Broly would take one of the soldiers by the neck and throw him over another. Then he would hit each of the rest. He would knock them all out in one blow. Wow, at least you're not trash like my men. If you apologize to me for saying you're the strongest, I might spare your life and let you be one of my faithful servants. Broly would become furious and begin to raise his key. The ground beneath him would crack. Vegeta would be terrified by the earthquake he was generating. He doesn't seem to be so weak after all, Vegeta would say. At least I'll have an interesting fight. Vegeta would launch himself towards Broly. He would hit him in his chest with a fist punch, but Broly wouldn't take the slightest damage. Impossible, Vegeta would say. Broly, with a slap, would throw Vegeta away. Vegeta would be shot several meters on the ground. He could not believe the power that Broly had. You damn insect, you're going to pay! Vegeta would raise his key to the maximum. He would transform into a Super Saiyan, but when he launched himself towards Broly, Broly would grab him by the neck. Vegeta tried to free himself, but Broly's strength didn't allow him to do so. His neck with force, he would not let him breathe. Little by little, Broly would know the knowledge and maybe he could die if he continued to be attacked by Broly.